expect the electrocardiograph and from these p q r s t the, these peaks uh, the doctor are going to ultimately determine whether a particular patient is having a disease or not but what happens since we take the powers from a 50 hertz supply in here in this country it produce some hum sound humming sound it aid nice to this electrocardiograph signal so we are going to use digital signal processing methodology how to remove that we are going to design filter to remove that right now here's here's yeah. the case uh, in case you download any ecg data from the internet and it is not having any humming sound so what you do initially you corrupt it by in, in incorporating the 60 hertz 120 and 180 into it so it it will be a corrupted waveform like this after that what you're going to do is that uh, you 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 have to remove uh, those so you have to pass it through the filter now that filter is actually in in first case they use 60 hertz eliminator and the second case you can pass 220 and then 180 so ultimately you will get a response which is uh, well within the range the second thing is that sometimes they they know that the ecg signal is usually in the range of 125 to 40 hertz so you can design another filter a band pass filter uh, to pass the final signal through it to get the desired ultimate ecg signal from it the original ecg signal in some of the cases, uh, it, it, it does range from 0 0.01 hertz to 250 hertz as well. So depending on the uh, type of apparatus that's being used. Anyway, uh, you can download any ECG signal from the internet and then you, you are going to corrupt it. How you will corrupt? You will just create any 60 hertz signal, a 120 hertz signal. And what you're going to do is you, you, you're going to do aid the, uh, these, you, you know how to aid uh, another frequency signal to the given signal, right? So you will mix them. And then after that, you pass it through the filters to get the desired response that is that you are expecting. So we're going to do that today in, 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 in the lab experiments as well we're going to design the notch filter we're going to get the ecg signal from internet we're going to first plot it then we're going to corrupt it with the 60 hertz 120 hertz and 180 hertz and then we are going to pass it through the, uh, the these different filters and check out its response and then just like it says that since the the, the signal the signal might occupy the original signal that we receive might occupy a wider bandwidth but the the usual uh, understanding is that your data is between 0.25 hertz and 40 hertz so uh, the original signal that we download we have to analyze it in the frequency domain we have to check out how much bandwidth it is getting already then once we corrupt it we check out again what is the bandwidth it is holding then we will pass it through different notch filters to check out where how much bandwidth is left and then we ultimately pass it to a band pass filter to get the desired range to, to, to avoid any kind of uh, noise that is out there. Okay, so uh, design, th this is uh, the case, uh, how, how to do such a thing. Design the ECG signal pre-processing system for the heartbeat rate detection. So how would you do that? Uh, first of all, 60 Hertz eliminator design notch filter. How are you going to design that? how to remove these, these fundamental frequency, 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and 180 hertz. And how to design another filter having uh, 3 dB bandwidth for each filter. For this case, for now, uh, let's say the 3 dB bandwidth is 4 hertz. The sampling rate is 600 hertz. A Nash filter type is second order IAR filter, like the one that we discussed earlier. So they are going to be using this particular Nash filter. The formulas, everything is are, are, are in here. So you just have to substitute these values into this. Uh, sorry. So you have uh, these values. You substitute these values into this formula. You'll get R, theta, and K. And once you have this, you will get the response of first one, which is H1. 
after rearranging you can have the difference equation as well similarly h2 similarly h3 remember h1 was for 60 hertz h2 was for 120 hertz and h3 was for 180 hertz and these are the corresponding responses once if in case you want to find out the response of these filters uh, once you have the difference equations i guess you guys know how to uh, find out the value of h of n right from the transfer functions by taking the of course taking the inverse transform so that that is going to be your class assignment to find out the h of n for 60 hertz for 120 hertz and for 180 hertz and then plotting them in matlab is your lab assignment for today okay so and then uh, pole zero placement in case you want to pass the final signal through a uh, passband frequency of 0.25 to 40 hertz this is actually talking about this particular filter right so from this you can easily detect the signal for the heart rate detection that which is ultimately generated and it has supposed to be within this range so this the second part is talking about a band pass filter again uh, if you guys remember uh, we discussed this band pass filter here this this these, these these formulas are here you can just simply substitute the values and you can find out the expression of h of z for the band pass filter within this that range so yeah okay in second case this this is provided uh this is assumed that the passband ripple is between 0.5 db which is not that bad you can use chevy shaft for order filter or you can use uh, by linear transformation method or you can use the method that we discussed earlier on so uh, i think the best thing would be uh that you you guys design it using this formula and you guys design it using that pole zero method and then you can compare the result of both of them right because your your bandwidth range is provided to you your sampling frequency is provided to you uh, so you can easily design both of them and then you can compare their response the only difference is that we discuss only the second order using pole zero method uh here it is sorry we discuss the band pass filter for only second order so in case you gone want to go for the uh, fourth order you just have to place more poles in here so that they are going to be uh, in this uh, arrangement but the only thing is when the polynomial go to up to the fourth order uh, solving that for you is going to be a, a bit challenging so uh, i i won't want to push you there uh, you can go for the second order band pass filter for now because you have formulas already out there and in case of jb shaft filter uh, that formula this is actually generated from the Chebyshev fourth order filter, analog filter. So their response is already available to you on Google internet. So you can easily, and then using bilinear transfer method method, you can replace S by the value of that. You will end up with an expression like this. And after rearranging, you can get the corresponding uh, difference equation. And once the system response is passed through it, you will get the ultimately response of this thing that is the signal for the heart rate reduction and that that is going to be the the signal from which a particular doctor can detect whether a patient is having that particular disease or not anyway so uh this is actually a practical example uh for uh, for implementation for you guys uh, as an uh, home assignment and also as the uh, lab assignment so we're going to go through a, a little bit more of the theory lecture and then we can start implementing this system before going further uh, in case there is any question any particular slide you guys want me to repeat anything you want me to discuss we can do that so let me remind you what we have discussed today we have discussed using pole zero method how to design a low pass first order filter how to design uh, high pass first order filter how to design a band stuff filter how to design a uh, band uh, uh, band pass and band stop filter we, we discuss both of them and then we discuss a real life scenario of uh, ecg electrocardiograph signals uh, which we first corrupted using humming sound and then we designed different notch filter we cascade them cascading uh, now how would you do cascading in case of uh, uh, in, in matlab code 
because if you are using block diagrams, you can draw the blocks, but if you're writing code, how would you do that? Cascading is like if you pass the signal through the first block, you produce the output, and then you pass it through the second block. So passing through any block was actually convolving the two. So you can convolve the signal with the first uh, transfer function, first impulse response of the first filter, and then you can, the, the output is then further convolved with the second and then convolved with the third one. So the, the ultimate uh, outcome is going to be similar to like a cascading system. This is how you're going to do using code. Uh, do you guys understand the, the, the concept of cascading, how you are going to do using code? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. So cascading is actually passing through the first block, mean uh, giving the signal, uh, convolving the signal with the system response of the first filter. Whatever output is generated, then you convolve with the system response of the second one and then the third one. So convolving them is actually passing it to a system, right? Because every time you apply a signal, it is actually convolved with the system response. In the output generated, if you play, apply to the second one, it is like you are passing through a cascading uh, network, right? We have also discussed a fourth order uh, filter, which is actually used in the field for extraction of ECG signal. Uh, since we have done previously how to transform the analog filter into equivalent uh, digital filter, so we're not dis discussing that today. We are only discussing that uh, you, you, in case you don't know the Chebyshev fourth order filter response, you just Google it, you get the analog filter uh, expression from there, then you replace S by equivalent values of Z, and then you'll get digital filter. And you can substitute the value of sampling frequency to get the final uh, expression difference equation. And then you can pass the signal through it to get the final response of the system. Is that loud and clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Now we'll move on to the uh, further cases. Uh, see, we discussed this last week, but uh, there are a few things that, that you need to understand. What do we mean when we, we are mapping an analog frequency to digital frequency? We do know that the analog frequency ranges from zero to infinity, but the digital frequency ranges from zero to pi. You guys understand that, right? So when we are mapping from one uh, analog to digital, we are actually mapping it from a normal frequency to uh, equivalent angular frequency in digital domain. And these are the transformation formulas. This is what we discussed last week, right? Remember the symbols. These symbols are being used for angular frequency in analog domain. These symbols are used angular frequency in digital domain. You will remember those, right? And this is actually tangent inverse, and this is tangent. This T is your sampling time. So if your sampling frequency is provided, T is actually one hour FS. So I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. In case you have to shift from one frequency range to another, these are the formulas. So with this, you can transform any time from digital to analog or analog to digital. So if you are shifting, from analog to digital, this is your formula. If you are shifting from digital to analog, this is your formula. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's uh, discuss it. <laughs> a, a case uh, to evaluate this particular <laughs> discussion we had. You want to design a digital low pass filter with a bandwidth of let's say eight kilohertz and a sampling frequency is 24 kilohertz using bilinear transformation. Right? First of all, specification in digital frequency need to be calculated. So F naught was given, so from that we calculate the value of WC, that means cutoff frequency, WC is this thing, right? So first we calculate that, that is two pi F divided by FS, that will give you that value. Second thing is that the specs of analog filter to be digitized, right? So we substitute these values and we get the value of omega, which is, which are these values? What are the equivalent values in analog domain, right? So from this, 
we get the value of the cutoff frequency. Next, design an analog low pass filter with this bandwidth. Now, what we did, we transformed a digital frequency bandwidth to an equivalent analog frequency domain bandwidth, which gave us the cutoff frequency ranges, which is which is this, right? So now using your analog filter design methodology, you can design a filter with this frequency, you can get the transfer function in analog domain, the analog filters you guys have discussed, and then you can apply bilinear transformer to obtain the desired digital filter. These are the steps that you have guys have done. Now it's your choice whether you want to use Butterworth filter, you want to use KB shelf filter, you can check out from the internet any, and you can also, uh, when not specified, it's totally up to you whether you want to go for the first order filter, second order filter, third order fourth filter, or fourth order filter. But these are the steps. You have to keep one thing in mind. When you are asked to design a filter, is it digital filter? Uh, is the frequency given for the digital domain or is the frequency given for the analog domain? In this particular case, we they are asked for the digital domain frequency because when you get uh, signals in the form of samples and you find out its bandwidth in MATLAB, that is digital, right? And if you have to remove a specific frequency in digital domain, you need to understand that the digital frequency and analog frequencies are two different things. So if you want to remove something in MATLAB, that's a digital frequency. You have to check out what are what is the equivalent frequency in time domain. So this is how this transformation is done. See, this was given in digit as a digital frequency. The first you have to find out digital angular frequency. Then you have to shift it to equivalent uh, angular frequency of analog domain. And from that we get this value FC, right? So that this is this is your equivalent.